Hello, it's me, and I'm back here with another video. Let's go! What's up, guys? Let's check out Video Game Donkey's new video. I've been wanting to watch this for a while. Apparently, this video, he's gonna be, like, talking about uh, Uncharted, which was one of my favorite games of all time. I've played all of them. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and check out Video Game Donkey's Donk View. Revisiting Uncharted. When I first reviewed Uncharted 4 back in 2016, I said, do you know that even I am wrong sometimes? I then proceeded to be wrong about Uncharted 4, and what this proves is that I am actually never wrong. Uncharted 4 is one of the best games ever made. Don't even try to argue otherwise. Remember, I can never be wrong, but back then, I was wrong, and I'm gonna prove it. In my old review, I said Uncharted 4 has the most boring climbing ever. This is more true for the first three Uncharted games. In those games, the climbing is very very stiff and mostly there so that the player can spend time looking at the pretty graphics. Uncharted 4's climbing is faster and much more satisfying in its presentation. When you land on a wooden floor, you hear the thud reverberate because there's nothing underneath it. Nathan Drake has all these unique animations depending on what he's actually climbing on. I mean, look at this. Boom, unique animation. Now watch some dudes. Oh, what was what he did? He said, wah, wah, wah. You can drop way down onto a dude's head and say, bop. Eventually, you get this tool, which lets you hook into walls, you repel down ropes. When you're in a precarious spot, the camera really emphasizes it and makes you think, oh yeah, I'm gonna die. The huge leaps feel so weighty and satisfying. And then there's the incredible clock tower sequence where you're jumping across moving gears and sliding through them. Don't get me wrong, the climbing is the weakest aspect of this game, but it's impressive how much love went into the weakest part of the game. What's cool about Uncharted 4 is that traversal- <laughs> That part, <laughs> how much love went into the weakest part of the game. It was the weakest and they put all the love, just imagine the rest of the game. It was more than just climbing. Bingo. Now we're in business. In my old review, I said, put a goddamn grappling hook in every game from now on. Today, it is a legal requirement that every video game has to have a grappling hook. You're <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Halo has no business having a grappling Well, it's open world. I guess Infinite needs a grappling hook, but it does, yeah. Nah, it doesn't really need it. There could have been a better way. Yeah. Welcome. By combining this with the sliding mechanics, you get much more dynamic platforming than we've ever seen with this franchise. Whoa! Made it. There's also scuba diving. You drive a boat and a jeep, and what's really messed up is how good the handling on the jeep is. Kojima Productions has some of the most talented game developers in the industry, and even they were struggling with vehicle collision and death stranding. The terrain in Uncharted is similarly lopsided and hilly, and yet the jeep can handle everything you throw at it. Rickety little bridges, sudden drop-offs, food stands, other jeeps, roaring currents, large boulders. Somehow this rental jeep can do it all. <laughs> It's amazing that they've managed to create environments that looked very realistic while keeping the stylized art style of Uncharted. They did a good job of making it feel like a true adventure. That realism was not there to ruin the game or there to like over-realize a situation or simulate um, jeeping. It was simply because it had, was part of the story and the adventure. And he is a treasure hunter. And sometimes you have to, have to explore terrain. So it's very crucial that the terrain feels dangerous and weighty and slippy based on environmental artifacts on the ground. They did a really good job of making it feel like that. You know, this game still looks amazing till this day. <laughs> Death Stranding, the whole game is about using vehicles to deliver packages. Driving is fundamental to its gameplay. Uncharted is a shooter with two chapters where you drive a jeep and there are details Death Stranding could learn from this game, like how you gain more traction when driving on rocks instead of mud. As a shooter, Uncharted 4 is one of the most unconventionally paced. You don't actually do any shooting until chapter 4 when Nathan starts blasting targets in his attic with a nerf gun. Bullseye. Shootouts are sprinkled into this game more as a reward than a constant. It's a very gradual buildup that subliminally aligns the player with Nathan Drake's thirst for adventure, and by the time that it finally gets to the action, oh.
seven years later, I am still waiting on AAA video games to look and play like this. However, what really sets Uncharted 4 apart is its strong storytelling, which is still today the rarest quality in video game. That's pretty beautiful that Uncharted has captured, like, that alone is kind of crazy, right? That Uncharted has still captured something that video AAA video games don't really do anymore. We have all these live service games. We have all these big open worlds, but we don't have true linear to format gameplay storytelling type AAA games anymore. Everything has to be like, oh, this big event and this live service game where you buy all these transaction stuff, which is great. But um, it, it's it would be nice to see more games like this. You know, and Uncharted tried to be more open, of course, but um, they knew that it'd be detrimental to the story of the game and stuff like that. I mean, for instance, when I first played Uncharted, the only thing I could think of was like the first game was like, oh my gosh, look at this lush environment and the story and how the pacing is pretty well, like a cinematic movie almost. And then Uncharted 2 came out and then it was like, it went all the way there. It was almost like a Hollywood blockbuster. It was crazy. It was nothing that most people hadn't really seen before in this industry, you know? Um, and then Uncharted 3 came out, which was kind of a blunder on Naughty Dog's part, but it was still pretty decent. Uncharted 4, hit it right off the ballpark it hit all the notes and like you said you get thirsty for that adventure and it knows when to give it to you and it made you work for it and get invested and it felt like it was worth getting invested to by the time you got to the set pieces of story in this game With most games, it seems like the developers make the levels and assets first, then the writers come in and try to string those things together in a coherent way. I don't know if that really is how games are written, but it would explain why most games have such stupid nothing stories. Uncharted 4 feels uncompromised, like the writers came up with the craziest treasure hunt they could imagine, didn't even take into account how the studio would turn that into a video game, and then Naughty Dog actually did. For the first half of the game, every chapter takes place somewhere else. You start in an orphanage, then you're in a prison in Panama, now you're a scuba diver, now you gotta do a heist in Italy, now you gotta find the pirate's tomb in Scotland, bad news environment designers, the treasure is actually in Africa, well to be more specific it's actually in a market town in Madagascar, w well actually seeing is believing, what I love about Naughty Dog is how they illustrate their stories instead of spoon feeding them to you through lazy exposition dumps, you aren't reading text logs about Henry Avery and Libertalia, no it's all unfolding before your eyes. The ominous subtitle a Thief's End could be referring to a dozen different characters. This is a story about rummaging through the ruins of other people's stories. A letter from Chloe stowed away in the attic. Evelyn's lifeless manor full of priceless objects. Joseph Burns' abandoned cell. Henry Avery's elaborate trials and failed utopia. All of these stories contrast and overlap with Nathan Drake's own story, presenting hypothetical paths which he could have or could still go down. Characters here don't just spout off their deepest inner feelings, instead it's on the actors to communicate those emotions in a more subtle way through facial expressions, body language, and tone. What's magic about this style of storytelling is how it allows each player to come to their own conclusions. The lure of adventure beckons Nathan Drake out of his comfortable life, but just as he accomplishes his goal, the thrill vanishes, reappearing in the dark distance. When Sam unloads this insane story about breaking out of jail with Hector Alcazar, even on my first playthrough, I thought, yeah, this is total bullshit. Nathan knows his brother. He knows it's bullshit, but he wants to believe what he's hearing so much that he doesn't question it. Most people would be pretty envious of the life Nathan has set up. He's got a nice house, a job where he can still dig up treasure, a a fridge full of beer and a beautiful wife that loves Crash Bandicoot. Why? Why would you risk all of that? Of course, you push that question aside when Sully shows up and it starts feeling like a real deal Uncharted game. Just like Last of Us 2, the narrative tricks you into wanting to fulfill the selfish desires of its protagonist. In 99% of games, the player is meant to feel like a hero, like your actions are saving the world. In Uncharted 4, you are ruining this man's marriage so that he can pretend to be Indiana Jones. How is Elena cool with all this? <laughs> <laughs> doug has got a good point it's kind of like why would you risk everything but he must have loved adventure that much man 
Jesus, kid. Uncharted 4 is masterful in how it sets its character motivations in conflict with each other. In Sam's mind, it's always been him and Nate first the world since they were kids, then Sully and Elena took him away. Ironically, this is how we perceive Sam. To us, he's the outsider. He wasn't there for Uncharted 1 where you had to shoot 300 zombies. He wasn't there for Uncharted 2 where you had to fight a Yeti. He wasn't there for Uncharted 3 where you had to go to Subway. We trust Sam about as much as... <laughs> <He's> a... <laughs> He wasn't there <laughs> when he had to go to Subway. <laughs> I almost forgot about that commercial. That that commercial was weird. Sully does. That rift between his father figures goes both ways. Why are you here, Victor? Because somebody's got to keep an eye out for him. When Nathan discovers his brother is still alive, he spends all night recapping the entire Uncharted trilogy before remembering that he has a wife. I'm married. I can't believe- uh, Elena, from the stories, that's my wife. Sam Drake isn't a villain, but he brings out the worst part of his brother, and it's not until he finally teams up with Elena that Nathan starts stepping out of the shadow of Henry Avery. Saint Dismas said, we receive the due rewards of our deeds. But do we? Did the gullible optimist of Libertalia deserve such a harrowing fate? Does Sam deserve Nate? And does Nate deserve Sully and Elena? Uncharted blurs the past with present in many ways, challenging us to split the difference. One more time, the camera pans out from Crash Bandicoot, which does not have a scoring system by the way, to reveal Cassandra Drake. This ending, man, do. This is the most fulfilling, joyous ending I have ever experienced in a video game and it's one that takes on a whole new context for me now that me and Leah are having our own daughter. Because this was actually a baby video the whole time we having a baby everybody. <laughs> I will say it was a great ending. Uncharted 4 was amazing. I hope they make one with their daughter. Anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. I'll see you. Peace. Peace out.